Hey everybody, so never mind if the uh, dogs bark and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I like spooky things, I like D&D stuff, and I'm really excited about Von Richten's coming out. I like the idea of having um, the Frankenstein, the, the vampire, the hag, all that kind of cool stuff is coming out. But, did you know there's also a lot of cool things out there in the DMs Guild that also does spooky things? For example, as you can see here, the necromancy guide to undeath by Benjen games it's pretty awesome it came out a few years ago it's been uh it was last updated as you can see in the screen back in 2019 so it's been around a little while it's been tested a little bit it's um not as popular as it should be i think because it offers some incredibly interesting spooky options for lots of different things you can do with characters and not just within the fantasy realm not just within the um, the 5e rule set, the, the Forgotten Realms, all that kind of stuff. What I originally looked at it for was I got the 5e version of the Hellboy RPG and I wanted to do some more cool stuff and I wanted to have some uh, more things built on it that the BPRD could uh, go after. Um, this works really well for the necromancy guide to undeath since death catches us all eventually right let's take a look at what kind of cool stuff it offers just right off the bat it tells you you get the revenant race and i know there's an unearthed arcana revenant race and it's very similar but it was replaced with the reborn in von richten's so you wouldn't necessarily be able to get it outside of the unearthed arcana they work basically the same um you can pick one or the other it's not going to affect you much but you get 12 subclasses one for so many different parts of uh, other things. There's no Artificer because I don't think it was an official campaign or an official uh, option at the time this was originally written. Maybe they'll come up with something later on. Um, some type of... Uh, there is the Resurrectionist uh, Wizard in this. The uh, School of Reanimation. Maybe there'll be something Golem-like that can do other cool things. Uh, maybe you can build your own Warforged. I don't know. Uh, eventually but some inspiration can come from this book then you get different feats and talents which is part of another unearthed arcana thing basically it's a gift from the dm to get you spooky and going if you're having trouble with other stuff um different spells oh so many cool spells in this book there is formulae which are extremely complicated um types of potions and magic that have very specific requirements the type that would turn you into a lich and it's not just a lich you can have potential uh, vampiric uh, temporary vampiric powers for a while if you needed them um, there's a bunch of different ways to use the skills and abilities of the undead for a living character and that falls into this putrescence magic which um, it affects you, there's a table of 12 options. If you get all 12, then you just die, if you get all the traits. But you can push your luck and get some pretty amazing things. Um, and they only last until a long rest. Um, after a long rest, then one putrescence trait will go away. If you got up to 11, then yeah, you're gonna spend you know two weeks trying to rest it away. Or you can do like the character I wanted to use, for uh, the Hellboy RPG, which is someone that would use putrescent magic all the time, almost as a way to get high. So they were almost like a putrescence magic junkie, always pushing close to the edge. They make you get traits that make you uh, undesirable to be around. It, it takes away a lot of your abilities, but it also gives you some type of insight or um, other aspect of being undead, being able to be a ghost or... Uh, uh, handle necrotic uh, issues um, if you had to go through some type of uh, graveyard and everything does necrotic damage and it would be a benefit to you even if you were a good aligned character to be able to resist that then you could do something putrescent and you would gain some ability to walk through that challenge a little easier it's not limited to any class um, it's just how disgusting do you want to be like the aspect of that and like I said you can transfer that into um, any time frame that you want it to be in and I think it will work really well as someone who's a member of the BPRD pushing that line all the time and I think that'd be great for character storytelling but that's not it 
Other things that are also in here are, so there's some magical item in, items, undead, uh, everywhere. Spells that have to do with undead. You get traps that have a lot to do with different types of poisons. Poisons is a big part of this. And uh, some additional undead lore. You can just decide to do that whether you want it or not. Uh, that part is fine. But I thought it was really cool for the character options. Um, even if you don't use any of the other stuff and you can build lore and all that kind of cool stuff for yourself. Let me just click on some things to show you. This uh, is the Dungeon Master's Vault. It is a nice tool. You can homebrew anything you want. I know everybody likes D&D Beyond, but D&D Beyond is also really expensive. And for people like me that bought a lot of books on dead trees, then uh, rebuying everything on D&D Beyond is prohibitively expensive. So until they decide that they will uh, give you some type of certificate or authentication code or something else that will allow you to use both when you buy the dead tree version, then uh, we need another tool. And one of these has been the Dungeon Master's Vault. It used to be called Orc Pub, and it uses the 5e SRD, but you can make whatever homebrew stuff you want. And for the purposes of myself, I want to use this content. So I put it in myself, I have it for myself, and this is the tool I'm going to use. If you go and you buy Necromancy Guide to Undeath, you can put this stuff in yourself and use the character options as you want. So what kind of cool things are there? So absorbing the mind makes you like eye zombie. You um, eat a, a portion of somebody's brain. I think it's one ounce of their brain and then you can start getting some of their memories back, but you suffer putrescence. The same thing can happen with absorbed strength. If you eat a certain part of their, their rotting body, then you can gain Wendigo like some of their strength. Pretty cool stuff. Other options for animating things that you might find in a spooky world, such as the undead. Yes, animate undead already existed, but now you get a couple more spells to go with it. So you can get all of your stinky rotting friends to go along with you including benign undead as an option. So that is just raising somebody, your buddy's skeleton, not necessarily to use them against somebody else, but you can just have them kind of around hanging out with you. Shadows um, are things that you can also pick up. Uh, the idea of the black bag, I'm just, I'm not gonna go through every single one of these so <laughs> that you can still find cool things in there, but I'm gonna talk about a couple. The black bag is a, um, I wanted to put Johannes Cabal from Jonathan L. Howard's Johannes Cabal uh, Necromancer series into a game because he's like Sherlock Holmes but the spooky version of Sherlock Holmes and far more arrogant and he does deals with devils uh, for the purpose of scientific knowledge and um, that is the thing that motivates him the most is he wants to defeat death. He's got a reason that's never really fully explained, but he wants to defeat death and he will find the science that allows him to do it, even if that includes going into the mystic realms, such as um, tricking the devil. One of the things that he carries with him is a black leather bag with all of his different implements of um, medicine and necromancy together. The black bag spell here allows you to take this leather bag and when you open it up, you have implements of torture and other crazy things that can frighten people. You get scalpels and other cool stuff like that. It's just a neat flavor spell if you aren't using your spells for anything else. It's a cool thing that, that will work out there. Um, there are things like bone bursts and uh, corpse bursts that will allow you to uh, blow up corpses <laughs> and walls of bone and other crazy things that let you turn small segments of bone into... Um, constructs and other cool things. Uh, there's a rain of skulls that can happen uh, as part of the spells in this book. Really cool things. Uh, also uh, rodent infestation. There's already the swarm keeper, ranger, and a few other things if you get the Tasha's books and all that kind of stuff. This expands a little further than that. Consume likeness allows you, and also uh, I think there's one for consume soul. These are other putrescent magic things where you can um, become empowered by and change the sh your shape uh, by eating parts of the uh, still rotting bodies so uh, it fits pretty well into that that spooky theme 
You do not have to be evil to do these things, by the way. You just, you can be one of those campaigns that doesn't have good or evil. That it, your character is defined by their actions as opposed to where they they line up on this you know nine part grid, whatever the case that you want it to be. And I like that part of it. Um, there are some things that are carried. There's other spells that might do it better. Um, Echo Skull, I think, is the one where it allows you to see through the eyes of a skull. Like you can hand somebody a trinket of a, some an animal skull, and you'll be able to talk to them and and um, see through the eyes. You could do the same thing with like a sending spell or whatever, but it helps. Um, a formula of the Plague Bearer. The formulae are, like I said, are the the lich potions, but the Plague Bearer allows you to spread disease. In, a, in an area. This is great for a villain. Um, maybe the, they have to pick up all these different parts in order to create the formula and your job as the hero is to prevent them from getting those different things and they happen in different areas. Uh, so that part's pretty cool. Um, Lacerate is just a, a cantrip that allows you to do some, some quick damage. Um, Phantom Loss and Phantom Memory are fantastic ideas for spells I like. Phantom Loss makes you think that you just suddenly lost a body part and you magically fill in all the memories that go along with it. Only your character is affected by that. Everyone else is like, what are you talking about? You have an arm. You, ha you don't have a wooden leg. It's right there. But you are fully convinced that you have a wooden leg. Um, and then Phantom Memory is you are haunted by somebody you've lost so somebody that you know um that you care about you suddenly see and that totally could screw with the character's mind so um these can get into some really dark areas but that's kind of the point uh keep in mind everybody suffers loss in the real world so it may get to the point where it's too much for certain players you're gonna have to feel that part out but uh, if they're able to, to handle it, um, then you can get some really crazy things going on uh, story-wise that uh, wouldn't necessarily happen as easily without these. Undead Pustules is some type of like pus armor. So if you play Zombicide and you see all the, the, the fatty bursters and all the other ones and they have all the, the... I mean, if you look at any of the stuff that I have on my Instagram then uh, you see a lot of things from uh, Zombicide and Zombicide Fantasy, but they got the, the big boils on them, and this uses them as, a, um, as some type of uh, armor, and that part is pretty neat. Um, then, uh, like, there's a Paladin spell of Withered Limbs, so how the Paladins get, uh, get to use these different things is really crazy. So there's a lot, 50-something, 50 58 spells uh, in here, so... Depending on which ones you're using, it's pretty cool. Backgrounds, you have the anatomist, which is like a doctor, and the occultist, which is someone who is looking for strange um, scientific information about the mystic world. So that part is pretty neat. The race that's available is the revenant. This is great for one shots or small campaigns because this is a single minded person that is brought back to life much like the crow and has one thing to do it could be a very difficult thing to do but they will not die until that thing is done uh, if you play planescape torment it's like the immortal unnameable uh, unnamed one unnameable one i forget it's been two decades so <laughs> um but you can pick that game up it's always considered one of the best of all time and uh there's reasons for that um and then subclasses college of the banshee bard this is just a regular bard that instead of something uh like creation or one of the other ones you perform it, i guess it would be more like one of the the martial versions of the bard would be best used with this because you gain um the visage so you get a spooky face and you and the scream of the banshee so you'll do damage as uh, a bard with a banshee. I don't know that necessarily the bard is the best option to fit with this type of character, but uh, I mean, you'll get a selection of spells and you, different combat options and different things like that, so it, it can fit pretty well if you want it to. Um, the Cycle Breaker Druid is like the 
Oathbreaker Paladin, but for Druids. So instead of uh, the normal Druid stuff trying to preserve nature, you are against nature. This also allows you to wild shape, just like if you were a regular Druid, but now you are uh, becoming an undead version of whatever that the creature was. So if you were going to become an owlbear, then now you are an undead owlbear. Uh, and that will have certain pluses and minuses depending on how you do it. Um, the Ghost Stalker Ranger is exactly what it sounds like. It gains certain uh, abilities. Uh, I need to scroll down into it so I can tell you exactly what's going on. Um, you gain a bunch of different abilities that are specifically for tracking down and attacking ghosts. So you get a uh, magical vision from ethereal sight. You gain some ghost-like abilities yourself, such as the ectoplasmic coating, which allows you to um, create a, uh, a, a ghost coating on your weapons. That'll do some necrotic damage. Um, you don't get frightened uh, by the undead because of your uh, mental endurance. And at some point, you'll actually be able to step through physical beings um, in a type of ghost-like displacement. So you'll gain some aspects of the ghost um, as you hunt them and attack them. So that part's pretty cool. Oath of Blood Paladins. You are a vampire paladin and your oath is to the vampire race. Pretty neat. You get vampire skills and other kind of cool stuff. I do not think you're allowed to be a good aligned character, but you can be neutral. Path of the Ancestor's Wrath is someone that is empowered. It's a barbarian that is empowered by the death of their people. So like at the beginning of Conan the Barbarian, where his, the movie, not the books, um, where his whole uh, tribe of Sumerians are killed off and he's the only one left, he might become someone that takes the Path of the Ancestor's Wrath because he feels the, the, the need of his people to keep pushing him and you gain some extra cool abilities to go along with that. Um, the reanimation... Is that the... Uh, I forget where. I, uh, which one I had to put it down there. Uh, I'll get to the reanimation one in a second. I think that's the, the wizard. Um, but if it is the wizard... Yeah, it looks like that's the, the one it is. Um, you become reanimator. You are exactly the necromancer. You have a bunch of little people running around helping you out. And um, it expands the necromancy school with all the different spells way more than in the player's handbook and, or anything official from D&D. &D. So uh, if you wanted to try that before, and there's ways for you to be a good aligned one. Uh, he actually has a different product. Uh, it's called the White Necromancer. Never mind, the train's driving me crazy, but you might not be able to hear it. Um, the, the white necromancer is a benign um, character that uses the animus of the world and the, the spirits that exist to empower their spells. It's a little bit different, um, but it makes it so that their, uh, their use of necromancy isn't necessarily evil. Uh, and a lot of things will just default that necromancy is evil. And I like that there's a lot more options involved um, here. The Shadow Patron is uh, not necessarily a particular shadow, but the Realm of Shadows. And you get different shadow-based um, uh, uh, bonuses based on that. Um, you can animate the shadows around you and use them for various effects, such as protecting yourself. Or um, uh, they can... I think... There's one called Shadow Thief. That allows you, I think, to... It says Thief, but I think you can use it as a, an a to help you attack as well. So uh, there's that. You can Fade using the Shadow Fade, which is like a teleportation between shadows. So whatever DC Comics character you liked that uh, used that skill, and there were quite a few, then you can finally do that now with a lot of that cool stuff going on. Um, the Shadow... Okay, so the Spirit Domain Cleric is... A cleric based on um, ghosts also so uh, you can move let me jump up here to clerics I don't know how much of the book I can show that's why I'm not uh, showing the actual pages 
uh, for whatever the legal stuff is. The artwork looks really cool. Um, they've done a really good job on everything about it. It's one of the reasons I'm super excited about telling you, hey, you should check out this book even though it's a couple of years old. Um, so, uh, yeah. Okay, so you gain, uh, in the spirit domain, you get the same ethereal sight so that you can see things on an ethereal plane, not just your, your own. Um, you can go step as part of your channel divinity and you can take um, energy from um, other beings as you attack and gain some of it back, similar to the way the vampire works. Um, you can stay invisible even if you attack and miss. You would stay invisible and you can become incorporeal so that your body can pass through things and disappear. So you act like a ghost as part of the spirit domain. The undead champion is the fighter. And they're more of a person that is being used by a vampire or some other um, higher lich or something like that. Uh, almost like a warlock would be, but it's a fighter instead. You gain a roar and you can command uh, like an army of undead to go with you. If you are in an army of undead, then you can help um, command it. Uh, you are immune to being frightened and your weapon uh, can also become like almost alive on its own by the time you get to the end of it and that part's pretty cool. Uh, then the undeath domain of the cleric. So there were two cleric options. There's no rogue options in here. So I'll tell you that right away, but uh, there is two cleric options. The undeath one is um, different than the grave domain, uh, but I guess they would be pretty similar. You gain uh, Toll the Dying, you can Charm the Undead, and um, you can Leech Life. Eventually you become the General of Undeath, and if there's any um, undead creatures around you, then they get, you can command them to do whatever it is that you want. They get certain bonuses by being around you, such as extra hit points and all that kind of stuff. So if you took all of the different characters, uh, if you had a party of uh, characters from this book, then you're just going to have an additional set of corpses running around with you doing stuff. I don't know, make a carnival, do whatever you want to do with them. Um, but that's, that's that. Um, for sorcerers, the vampiric bloodline. Now you have vampire stuff that provides you with the um, the the spells instead of a dragon or giant soul or whatever the case is. Uh, you can hide this, and the idea is that you're supposed to hide this because there might be social stigmas that go along with it. So that part is pretty neat. And then the monk in the way of life draining key is exactly what it sounds like. Um, basically, when you do attacks, then you're going to uh, absorb and um, steal uh, life energy away from people. Everybody looks very, very goth in this book. Uh, nobody so much as uh, the way that the monk is set up here. Um, you can create air, uh, auras of energy around you that uh, set up darkness. And there's some spells and different abilities in here that allows you to see through magical darkness. Um, and the uh, life uh, the life drain from there. Uh, the Eldritch Invocations, they sound pretty cool, but basically it just gives you different um, spells and that kind of stuff, so that's fine. Uh, the Feats, Black Blood, um, let me get, jump down to that page. That's about being an orc, and it allows you to have certain um, extra abilities it gives you uh, increased charisma so if you're going to be a warlock orc then it would be pretty useful there but uh, you can do necrotic damage along with your regular attacks a lot of these have to do with either resisting necrotic damage or doing necrotic damage uh, tomb raider uh, which was pretty cool um, it, uh, you spend a lot of time actually going through tombs, so it's not like you become Laura Croft and you can jump and run and do all that kind of stuff. But instead, this is whenever you trigger a trap, you can make uh, an intelligence saving throw instead of a deck saving throw to avoid the harmful effects. So if you're not a high dex character, you're not a rogue, but you spend a lot of time like Dr. Jones running through these tombs, then maybe you'll know how to avoid them. Uh, Undead Familiar is pretty cool. If you were uh, wanting to, instead of just call... 
a cat or dog or whatever it is to your aid, then you would have the pet cemetery version of it and it would be undead. So there's some neat things in there. Uh, a lot of it has to do with um, just gaining uh, a, a different version of undead, the same thing that you would normally get, but an undead version of that. That's true, but there weren't any real rules for that before and now you have a whole different world to basically double your options on a lot of different things. So that part I thought was fun. The talents um, are just gifts that you can get, like uh, maybe you can um, spit a little bit of acid uh, when you bite stuff. That's one of the things. So um, it's not necessarily uh, things that are going to change the game by much. You'll do like one or two extra damage here or there or resist uh, an extra damage. If you have a group that is having a difficult time um, or you made the challenges uh, too difficult, uh, you can give them these extra bonuses. Maybe the extra bonuses come through um, something that they did uh, as a reward. They're not going to break the game in any kind of way, but it just adds a little bit of extra flavor and makes the the player feel like they have something cool and special to go along with it. Um, the backgrounds, uh, one of the things that um, the occultist offers is uh, you can gain um, a trinket that has a spirit guide to go along with it. There are several types of additional magic, including voodoo. The, there are optional rules for voodoo in here, um, different ways that your characters can um, present themselves and uh, variations on the ways that their spells work. Things that you wouldn't have normally thought about because voodoo doesn't pop in, I think, until the 1800s of our time. So obviously it wouldn't ever exist in the Forgotten Realms. But now you can do that. Now there's ways for you to make that function. And if you want to take, like I said, this type of character and turn it into something cool or interesting, like I thought of for the Hellboy RPG, which is in the 1990s, um, you might be able to introduce these in a Call of Cthulhu. You might be able to even work in a Deadlands or any of these others. Um, just modify the amounts things work based on the rules. It's uh, There's nothing too crazy here. Um, there are a lot of different diseases and hazards. Uh, uh, other types of traps that um, you might have to work with just because the way that the, the bonus is... Uh, are set up if you were to try to switch over to Savage Worlds Rifts because um, Beyond the Supernatural a lot of this would work really well for Beyond the Supernatural but uh, I think that the themes of the characters, the types of characters there's so many cool ones in here that if you had a favorite flavor other than the Rogue because there's no Rogue options but if you had a favorite flavor and you wanted to do something entirely different then uh, I think you can get a lot of cool things out of this book. Um, up above me, back there, you can't see because of the way the thing's framed, I have Alter Quest, uh, and that is a game that has vampires as a... not necessarily as predators, but as a race that works within the world of, uh, of that game. So if I wanted to take any of the vampire characters and, and, and put them into... Uh, D and D, then this would be one of those books that would help do that. Not necessarily for just the regular vampire um, character uh, race options, because you can do the Dampier from Van Richten's, or there were several really good vampire options already. Um, there were some different ones in I think the Monster Guide and a few other things, um, but I know that there are some homebrew ones that have a very exhaustive list of vampire options. Um, but now, if you had a regular vampire character, you can have vampire adjacent things, such as that paladin, uh, such as that sorcerer. And uh, you could use the altar quest minis to go along with it if uh, you didn't have one all ready to go. So just letting you know on that end. If there's a different book that you find really cool, um, as you can see, you can put anything you want into uh, Dungeon Master's Vault. It's um, a pretty good little, little box there. You can put uh, monsters, you can put items, you can put all kinds of things. You can't mess with everything. I tried adding some tool sets, such as the dissector's tools, which I thought was really cool. 
Um, the anatomist gets scalpels and other things when they first start out, and uh, it's hard to add that type of stuff to uh, the Dungeon Master's Vault. But when you go to export the items and all that kind of stuff, then uh, it looks like a regular D&D sheet and uh, makes it pretty easy to share. And um, it doesn't cost anything, just like what you had with, um, unlike what you have with uh, D&D Beyond. So I know you can have one or two characters uh, in D&D Beyond for free, uh, but uh, I found that this was actually easier to work with and I could test the uh, types of characters and see where they would end up or what values they would have. And it was pretty close. It didn't have all the rules, but it does have text blocks that will um, help you modify things if uh, something doesn't work correctly and it's pretty uh, transparent as far as um, how it's making adjustments and, and what it gives you and doesn't give you. So nothing is perfect but uh, at least there is some kind of tool set out there um, when you're making these um, additional DM guild uh, choices. So if you're excited for spooky stuff, if you have any ideas for other spooky things that is not from Benjen Games uh, on this book or in the White Necromancer book that they also have to go along with it, there is also um, some harvesting guides on which... Um, like types of wood or other things that you can pick up that a druid could use or a necromancer could use to enhance the abilities of their uh, formulae and there's a different book on that where you can find out like oh pick up birch in this area or pick up this type of toadstool or that kind of harvesting and that part's pretty cool um, there were also some other harvesting guides for how to uh, fillet and chop up um, every single animal that uh, is in D&D uh, in the the, the uh, DM guide the first or not the DM guide the monster manual the first one um, there's a bunch of guides things like that and um, how to make different armors and add things to it just to make extra flavor that this would work really well with um, not just talents which is in this book but um, all the other ones that you can find in that guide uh, let me know, let other people know in the comments if there was a book that you uh, found really cool. I just happened to stumble across this one. Um, as you can see, it doesn't have a lot of ratings, but uh, I think it should. I think it should have a lot more people going in and saying, hey, I like Spooky, and this helps me enjoy Spooky. So, that being said, I hope you guys have a good one.